Any parent will tell you most kids' toys are short-lasting fads. They get played with once or twice, the children get bored, and then the toys are thrown away, and the kids demand something new. But there's one toy which has been a children's favourite for over 50 years, Lego. Lego is so popular there are now 62 bricks for every one of the 6 billion people on Earth. That's enough for everyone to build themselves a small Lego house, or if we all join forces, construct 10 towers, each of which would reach the moon. To satisfy our demand for these little plastic bricks, every year Lego need to make two more for everyone on the planet. So, how do they do it? Billund, West Denmark. It's 8 a.m. and senior designer Henrik Andersen is arriving for work at the Lego factory. Henrik is one of 120 designers based around the world, whose job it is to make sure Lego keep up to date with the latest trends. Because whilst you can still buy a bag of the basic building blocks, most Lego is now sold as part of specially designed kits. To come up with ideas for new kits, grown-up children like Henrik get to undertake one of the toughest jobs imaginable. Spending all day in a white room playing with Lego. This room is a sort of inspiration room to us all. We can come here and clear our mind and maybe go for a brainstorm. There's nothing in here that you can look at. It's all white, so it should open your mind to, to other new ideas. What the white room has inspired Henrik to come up with is a model train. He's trying to create something that doesn't just look really cool, but which will also fire children's imagination when they play with it. We start up researching the internet and the real world, what the trains look like, what the kids like, and, we, and then we start deciding what kind of trains we want to do. Henrik's design is based on the high-speed French TGV and German ICE trains. We sort of combined them and, and started doing the sketches for the front of the train. Most of Henrik's train is designed so that it uses standard Lego pieces. But to get the front of the train looking just right, they need a specially made piece. But instead of turning to a computer, Henrik uses more traditional techniques. Sometimes we do the old-fashioned way, where we go to our prototype room, where we cu cut it out from uh, foam or wood. This is uh, pre-made, so it will fit on a Lego brick. And then roughly I just file it out of a piece of foam. Once Henrik is happy with how everything is looking, they cast a prototype of the new piece. And after a few further refinements, the kit is ready to go into production. But Lego haven't always made little plastic building blocks. The business was begun back in 1932 by a carpenter called Ola Kirk Christiansen. Back then he was making wooden step ladders, stools, ironing boards and a few wooden toys. The toys proved so popular that two years later he named the company Lego after the Danish Leggot, literally play well. It was only later they discovered Lego also means I put together in Latin. After the plant burnt down in 1942, they switched from wood to plastic and in 1958 came up with the brick design still in use today. The main factory is still here in Billund and each year it churns out an astonishing 19 billion different Lego pieces. Those pieces begin with the Monday morning delivery of raw ingredients. The finished pieces need to be tough enough to withstand the kind of bashing only a child can meet out and safe if they end up being chewed. So they're made from an extremely resilient plastic known as acrylonitrile butadiene styrene, or ABS. 
The same stuff used to make black plastic pipes, computer mice and hard hats. To turn out the 2,200 different elements in 55 different colours requires a huge factory housing 850 massive moulding machines. They begin by heating the plastic to 232 degrees Celsius. The molten liquid plastic is then forced into moulds using up to 150 tonnes of pressure. These precision moulds are accurate to within two thousandths of a millimetre and the process so efficient that only 18 in every million elements fail to come up to scratch. As each bucket reaches capacity, the machine signals that it's time for collection and it's automatically replaced with an empty one. To keep the two million bits they make every hour moving along, 25 robots busy themselves ferrying the heavy buckets from the production line to the packaging department. Here the pieces are sorted, as every hour tens of thousands of different kits are packed together with the all-important assembly instructions. There's no arguing that Lego has been very successful to date. But the times, they are a change in. And with whizzy computer games competing for kids' attention, members of the development team like Stephen Canvin have been busy developing new robotic forms of Lego kits. We wanted to, to bridge the gap between the virtual world, which is computers, and also with, with our own physical world, with our bricks. These programmable robots come with everything, from ultrasonic hearing, sensors to let them see, and touch sensitivity. So parents, beware. Once your child has found a way to arm their robot with a Lego ray gun, you may find you're forced to raise their pocket money. Or else.